So I'm joined by Ben Joy today, and Ben, you've been doing some research into some of the documents that Epic have, I guess, released uh, during the uh, the court trade, the court card, ugh, the court case that's going on at the minute between themselves and Apple. Um, and you just wanted to, I guess, go through some of the the stats and the data about, you know, what they've been doing with the Epic Game Store and what that means for you know games creators, game studios, and how they should maybe be approaching Epic as a platform. Yeah, so it's um, there's some interesting stats that came out as part of the leaks. Um, so I came about this uh, this by way of Simon Carlos's Twitter, uh, and then it was uh, in his um, game discovery newsletter as well. So essentially, a document that's come out as part of the trial is a list of games uh, that Epic essentially paid developers for to do a one week free giveaway of of those games, and then it's a list of games. What they were paid, what they paid for it, how many it got downloaded for, and then from and the new Epic accounts that came off the back of that, and from that you can work out the, um, the user acquisition cost and the percentage of new users that but got that game that were new to Epic. So there's, it's really interesting reading. Um, so just the the overall uh, figures, and just to uh, clarify as well, this is from the end of December uh, 2018 to the end of September 2019. So we don't have the stats for uh, any later than that um but uh nonetheless it's, it's still still really interesting reading so uh in essence epic spent around 11.5 million uh dollars on on these titles uh of that 104.5 million entitlements uh, were claimed so essentially that's when a player gets one of the games and puts it in their library mm -hmm. uh there was just under 5 million uh new accounts to epic games off the back of getting uh the free trials essentially a new person signed up to the epic game store to get one of these free games and it was the first time they did um and that equates to a user acquisition cost of uh two dollars 37 per per person um on average uh which is a pretty good number um you know if you could grow your if you could grow your uh, business by an extra you know five million people um only paying two pound two dollars 37 per person obviously that is a lot of money but it, it's quite cheap per person to, to get yeah, them I mean, in it's incredibly low compared to you know i, I would give you two pound fifty to bring a viewer to this show yeah <laughs> and i'm not the richest company one of the richest companies in games <laughs> no. uh, and that's an offer adam is putting out to anybody in the chat so if yeah. you can bring someone to the show next week adam will personally give you two pound fifty for every person yeah if they follow us i'll give you two pound fifty there you go it's um, a verbal contract yep <laughs> Um, and obviously, in, in this number, it ranges massively from what was paid for a game and the amount that they brought in. So one comparison I just want to uh, bring up, which shows kind of the difference that it can make. So uh, Celeste, they, Epic Games paid $750,000 to have Celeste to give away for, for free. Uh, and that generated 62,000 new accounts uh, for Epic Games, so not bad. Um, there was 2.7 million entitlements of Celeste. But if you compare that to Rhyme, which they only paid $45,000 for, that brought in 95,000 new users. Mm. So the, the acquisition cost is phenomenally different there for the, for the two of them. Uh, 45,000 for, uh, what did I say, 95,000 new users or 750,000 for 62,000 new users. Yeah. So the whole scale is, is crazy. Um, the one that performed the best uh was uh batman arkham they paid uh a million uh 1.5 million for that and that brought in 613,000 new users um oh sorry it was subnautica actually that was the best they paid a million for subnautica 1.4 million sorry and that brought that was 17 percent of people who downloaded that were new mm. the cost per acquisition for that was one point one dollar 74 so um, and there were some duds in there, you know, uh, I mean, not saying that Celeste was a dud, but, you know. Uh, I love Celeste. Yeah. If you're watching yeah. Maddie Thorson, I love your game. Yeah, so that's that's not a, a, a rip, rip on the game, but in terms of how it performed for Epic, they paid a lot of money for not a lot of return compared to compared to the others. And that um, kind of, and it was something that Simon Carlos commented on um, in his commentary in, in his newsletter is it, it's, really interesting the way that these deals have come about and obviously we don't have the full facts of you know who approached who did people go to epic and offer did epic go to the studios and and just offer for the games um but it kind of it comes back to that perceived value um so like for 
uh, for the makes of Celeste. You know, it might not have been worth any less for them to to accept off Epic. You know, that was probably a hard. We're not. You know, we will accept anything less because we're. You know, we're comfortable not being on there unless you pay us this. Whereas for say the makers of Rhyme, forty five thousand dollars for doing not a lot really other than giving the game could could have been huge for them that could have you know given them way longer on their runway and essentially made them a lot more comfortable than they would have been and it kind of it comes back to um uh, what simon was saying is like you know don't look at this as free money yes it's great that you can you can get this and he referred to it as found money and the problem you typically can see and what this highlights is that you kind of think, oh, well, you know, we wouldn't have had this money anyway. So an arbitrary number is fine. Rather than thinking about, okay, what value is this actually going to be to the platform that is going to take it? Whereas if you, like, in for Rhyme, if they paid 45000 and it gave them nearly 100,000 new users to Epic Games. That's of huge value to Epic Games. So could could they have said, actually, we want 100000 Yeah. I mean, they, I think... they they possibly could have got it, but then the the problem you have is if you're too aggressive, then do Epic walk away? And if forty five thousand still a lot, it's 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 it. I think it's really a call to the to indie devs to just consider your negotiating position a little bit stronger. Obviously, we we don't know how it went on. They could have been offered a lot less, and forty five could have been what they bumped it up to. They they could have, you know, they could have built up their their offer, but um, it's it's just. It's really interesting reading to see the differences of what was paid for games and the, the way they performed. Because obviously this is all done up front. You know, mm-hmm. Epic Games could could have paid a million dollars for something and nobody got it. And that's the risk that they take. Because um, I guess Epic Games are taking almost all of the risk. I think it's safe to say that, um, you know, Rhyme probably wouldn't have sold $45,000 dollars worth of of games had they not gone on epic game store it's not like they would have had that money anyway um so yeah it's just really interesting and to see that what the negotiations possibly yeah, could I... be going forward now this data is out there because we've always said with game pass we don't really know and they xbox have said the deals are all over the place you know it's not a fixed fee so yeah i think people at home will be surprised by how low some of these numbers are like forty five thousand mm. pounds is that's not a lot of money like that's no, <laughs> not in the grand scheme of things. I obviously, if you're an indie and you have to make a choice to you know keep your studio alive, then you might be forced into taking a deal that's that's not great for you. But but that is uh, far lower than I think people expected, especially given the recent news we've heard about you know Epic Games as a loss making vehicle um, and the amount of money they're putting into it. I guess what's interesting is we don't have all the all the data here. Like we don't have. Grand Theft Auto Five, for example, you know how how do the negotiations around that go with a game that, while old, is one of the biggest media franchises in the world, and also with a company like Rockstar who probably are used to playing a little bit of their own hardball when it comes to negotiating positions, when it comes to you know doing deals with platform holders, they're very experienced in that regard. Um, so there's there's a kind of a whole other side to it as well that we that we haven't seen at least not yet, and I'm imagining that. We might get more along these lines through the through the court case, or we might not. Um, but yeah, it's interesting, regardless, to see just just the differences. Like you say, it's, it's the comparison which is fascinating. It's the hmm. how are Epic deciding what's worth money to them? They must be making a value judgment, and it's it's going to be somewhat subjective. It's almost like gambling. You know, they're putting money yeah. on on a on a number on the roulette wheel and seeing which games you know have the popularity to justify. Um, the the bet that Epic has placed on them, and I guess they can afford to do it. Yeah, I mean by by way of comparison, um, from from Warner Brothers, they paid as I said 1.5 million for for Batman Arkham, which mm-hmm. brought in 600,000 uh, new people. They also paid Warner Brothers 300,000 for Lego Batman, which kind of flopped. It only brought in uh, 46,000 new users, and that of that only one percent were. Um, of the total that got Lego Batman, only one percent were new to Epic. So essentially, they they paid three hundred thousand for for not a lot, but they took that gamble. Um, it, you're absolutely right. Epic are taking almost all of the risk, so it's it's fair to say that you know you can see why some of them were probably hardball negotiations, especially and rightly or wrongly, probably wrongly 
with, with the indie devs that they can they can play harder ball because they know that the indie devs can afford to take less and probably don't want to push it and walk away from a deal which for them is still a lot of money even though really if if they were a bit stronger in negotiating they probably could take more money for it but yeah all the risk is on epic side and as we know it they're not making money at the moment it, the epic game store is still losing money um so you know they they're pumping money in in the hope um and it's more than hope they've always got a business plan that they <laughs> they expect it to eventually start making Here's their money. business plan yeah. <laughs> um, as we've said they they expect to be profitable for, by the end of 2024 and they you know they're not moving away from that position they still expect that to be the mm. case um and what's interesting with the numbers is and it's not as black and white as this so we know epic take a 12 percent um cut of revenue from everything sold they use acquisition cost is two dollar 37 for for these games running very very crude mass that means each of these new accounts if they spend 20 dollars ish they've made the money back um on these new users and that has paid for this mm. now it's obviously not as simple as that not every single user who signs up is going to go on and spend twenty dollars some will spend more some will spend less some might not spend any and obviously it's not quite as black and white as okay they take 12 percent, so that's covered the cost that 12 percent is to you know to pay their staff and keep running as a business it's not just the cost of game so it's, it's not quite as black and white as that but to mm -hmm. simplify it that those are kind of the numbers um and that's kind of that leads into one of the arguments that i'm sure apple uh, are gonna say um is that okay you are bringing in all these users for free are they going to buy anything or are they just coming in getting the free titles and going away and then when more free titles come in and they're just building up a essentially a library of free games that they have got from you and not actually spending any money because while it is valuable to epic to grow their fan base and um, grow their users on their platform if they're growing large but they're growing for people who don't spend money then that's not going to be sustainable in the long run and i'm sure epic apple may already have made that argument but if they haven't i'm sure that's an argument that they're they're gonna make yeah one of the other arguments they're making in the court case at the minute which i think is interesting and we kind of we talked about how xbox have been on the stand uh, the the judge is interested in 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 the potential implications of the case so if for example they decide that ios uh, should be more open and you should be able to publish things on there without going through the app store um, you know, the judge is basically saying, well, how is that different to the way that an Xbox works or the way that a PlayStation works? Because they have their own closed systems and a lot of the court case, I think, is going to come down to semantics about, you know, is it a general purpose device? Is it a specific gaming device? Because in the old days, it was simple. You know, the Xbox, it was a gaming-only device and you could play games and that's all you could do with it. There wasn't even a digital store at that point. But now, you know, they increasingly are multimedia platforms. You know, Xbox essentially runs Windows under under the hood. So I think she's also um, Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers, who's a savvy lady who's running this case. She's looking at it. And she's like, you know, if if we make a ruling here, does this have knock on effects for you know the whole tech industry and anyone that makes hardware that's you know closed in this way? Um, so lots of interesting stuff to think about and I'm sure there'll be more in next week's show but we'll try and pepper in some other stuff if you're sick of Epic and Apple 